Hi, I'm Lynn Roxy. Today we're going inside of an acoustic piano to see what the three pedals do. And then later in the lesson, I'll teach you a song, The Chimes, to apply the pedal to. And you'll see how beautifully it rings. We're inside of an acoustic piano. Let me play the first part of the chimes with no pedal at all. Now I'll put my right foot on the right pedal. Keep your heel on the floor. If you only have one pedal, it, it will be this one, the sustain or the damper pedal. Here's what it'll sound like. The middle pedal is depressed with your right foot. Push it down and slide it over to the left so that it hooks. Now, I don't have my foot on the pedal anymore, but this felt stays right where it was. Now I'll play the same phrase. It's muted. You can practice in an apartment or if someone's watching TV or something like that. And the damper pedal also works with, with that pedal too. So, see it's muted and sustained. Now, I'm going to push down that middle pedal and then pull it over to the right. It's hard to do. I'm standing up right now. Uh, and see, now it's not, not on anymore. Now we're back to uh, unmuted playing. Your left foot on the left pedal means that it will play softer. This is the una corda, U-N-A-C-O-R-D-A, -A, the one chord. Typically, it's known as the soft pedal. So these hammers you see will go closer to the strings, therefore, it will automatically play somewhat softer. Not muted, but somewhat softer. On a grand piano, the entire key mechanism and hammers would shift to the left slightly so that these hammers don't play three strings, they only play one. Hence the name una corda, one chord. Therefore, it's softer. So those are what those three pedals do. On some other older pianos, the middle pedal is the sostenuto pedal. Uh, I can't really demonstrate it on this particular piano because it doesn't have that feature. Most of the newer pianos have the mute, the mute feature like that. And that's all you really need to know right now about the pedal. This song, The Chimes, you'll put your right foot on the right pedal, hold it down the whole time, and it'll sound like gorgeous chimes. chimes my hands are in the F position that's five and F in your left hand and one on F in your right hand go ahead and teach yourself the first two lines there and if you have problems you can watch my hands what they do but I believe you can teach yourself that remember a dotted half gets three counts we're in three four time signature the bottom four tells you that a quarter note gets one count. That's just a reminder. The third line now, these are all B flats, and they have that little mark over it. That's an accent. That means strike it harder. It may not sound really accented because I'm playing on a keyboard to record in MIDI, but I am striking those pretty hard. So anyway, the third line down is this particular B flat right here, right below middle C. B is below C. This is B, this is B flat. Then the fourth line is this B flat. You might say, well, how do I know? Because that line there means this B flat. It doesn't mean this one. 
Now the last line in the treble clef, that B flat means this one. It doesn't mean any other B flat. And so you'll strike it hard and hold each one of these dotted halves, of course, for three counts. Now when you take the repeat, the third, fourth, and fifth line, you can play these B flats anywhere on the keys. The my hands will go out of range, so I apologize. But the very bottom note, if you're playing on an 88-key piano or keyboard, the very bottom note down there, look, uh, it's, well, the wait a minute, the very bottom black note is a B-flat. And the very top black note is also a B-flat. So these black notes are really sandwiched in between two B-flats. So pick any B flat when you play the third, fourth, and fifth line so that you can get comfortable with the entire keyboard and plus it keeps it, you know, interesting too. And that is the chimes. Together you and me make perfect harmony. I hear a rhapsody.